there's something that inner knowing that you knew that something was going to come down so they don't spend all their money on Black Friday, right? Mm -hmm. You had a sense that there's something still going to happen again. And you didn't want that responsibility of telling people that. Because even though there was all the perks, there's that part of you, that agency of choice that it was like, no, I don't like how this feels. This is not who I am. And this is not how I want to show up. So when you started to recognize, or I'm assuming that you had this awareness that there was this misalignment that didn't feel right and that it reminded you, you had a choice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the more conversations I had after we reorganized the team following having half the folks leave, the more I realized how much I was not in control. Mm-hmm. And control is a funny thing because most of us don't um, realize how much influence we have over the situations that we're in. We say things like, I didn't have a choice or I had to. Mm-hmm. instead of I chose to, or this is what I decided to do, or this is what I wanted. Yeah. And the minute that life starts happening to us is the minute that we put ourselves in a space of being a victim. And I don't believe anything good comes out of being a victim because you don't feel like you have to do anything other than say the other person's a bad person. And I, when I realized that I was pointing the finger at people who were supposed to be on the same team as me, I realized that I had to do something different because that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And and the other thing is that it's that employee mindset of thinking that because I'm in a corporate America or whatever company I work for is that I'm safe, I'm I'm protected, right? And that nothing will happen. And you feel like you're in control because you're working for an organization. And then you switch over to the entrepreneurial mindset. Well, there's so much uncertainty and there is a sense of control and there isn't, but it can be quite messy in the beginning. Was it messy for you when you jumped in? Oh, I had no idea what I was doing. And I went cold. I didn't have any clients. I didn't have a project. I, I didn't have any clear path to revenue. And so it was me, my savings, and a, a, a hope that things would, my plane would be built on the on the way down. But I jumped out of the plane without a parachute. Like there was nothing there. And so, yeah, it was absolutely messy. I said that I wanted to buy apartments when I started. And uh, what I ended up having to do was pivot into fix and flip houses just so that I was adjacent to the projects, even though, I wasn't doing what I said I really wanted to do. And the funny part about that was, and it reminds me of something my mom told me when I was a kid. She was like, we were, there was a car stopped in the turning lane and the person was just sitting there with their blinkers. And my mom kind of laughed and said, nobody's going to help them. And I was like, what do you mean? She said, nobody helps you when you just sit in a car with your blinkers on. And she said, but if somebody gets out and starts pushing that car, people will stop and get out to help them. And so what that translated to me in this instance was, let me start pushing my car. Let me just try to make something happen. And eventually I was led to people who could help me do the thing that I really thought I wanted to do. And this is where I think, you know, when people think about the entrepreneurial path or they're scared to make the leap that they might be considering, it's what's going to happen? Well, if you stay in inaction, nothing will happen. But as you know, as you took your steps, you were introduced to people or there were connections that were made. How, mm-hmm. how did that part come to be? Like, did, was it the questions you asked? Was it previous people you knew? How did it help un- start unfolding to lead you down the path where, where you went to? Yeah. So for this initial part, the real estate and really from a real estate perspective um, or a private equity perspective, we used to do some hard money lending when 
I was in corporate America. And so we would give money to people who were doing fix and flip projects. And they would take that money to do renovations or whatever they were doing on their project. And then they would pay us back when they sold the property. And so we had cultivated a network of folks who were in the real estate space. And they got an, one of the people that we worked with got an opportunity to work on a project. Now, the thing was, I showed them the project that I wanted to work on, but neither one of us were really qualified to do the project. And so when a person reached out to them about the same project that I had presented to them before, they mentioned that they wanted me to be a part of it because I was the one that originally did the deal or demonstrated that this deal was a viable option. And so they invited me in as a part of the team that they were being invited to. And so the thing that I've learned more than anything in entrepreneurship is that all opportunities come from other people. And for the folks that aren't actually interested in helping others, it's really difficult to get people to want to help you if you aren't helping anybody. And so back to service and generosity, I think it's going to be a recurring theme in this conversation. Yeah. And how did you manage that transition? Like, you know, I, I see here that you talk to people about that change, that transitional mm -hmm. change that it affects your self image or relationships, mm -hmm. the your health. Like, what did you learn about yourself in this transition? Because I know the layoffs were very traumatic, mm -hmm. but you also learned something about yourself in the process. Mm -hmm. And then when you take the leap, like there's this total evolution of learning all the time. And I think this is one of the things I like to um, emphasize on the show is that it's not a one and done. <laughs> you are continually growing. Right. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about that life transition and, and how, how has it shaped you? Yeah. And, I, you know, women, I think, are a lot better at this than men. But many times when people introduce themselves, they say, my name is and I my position is whatever that is, right? This is my function. And so they wrap their self-image and their identity with whatever they do to earn money. And the first thing I had to accept was I wasn't the person that was running a division anymore. I was a business owner that didn't have any projects or any clients or pretty much anything. And so figuring out who I actually was, was is so important. You know, and the process that we built, our next process is built on the fact that I didn't know how to nourish myself when I was making the transition, which is what the N stands for. You know, the ability to go back through and figure out what skills are transferable and what you were really good at and who you are without the title is so important because it is where it's the foundation where everything is built from or on. And so yeah. what I kind of bumbled and stumbled through was who am I now? And so when I got invited to the deal, I had a very hard time articulating what value I could bring. And when I was going to the banks looking for finance and when I was trying to do it on my own, I had a very hard I, a hard time articulating why I was qualified to do the thing. In, in corporate, you have, you know, well, I had I did this job and I did this job and I did this job and that led me to the, this job. You have a career track more often than not if you're in a large company. In entrepreneurship, there is no such thing. And so your ability to put a package together and connect the dots on why this uh, smorgasbord of skills that you have uniquely qualifies you or prepares you to do what you're getting ready to embark on is the magic of being successful. And the only way that you can get there is to nourish because most of us downplay our superpowers. We pretend that it's not that big of a deal or that it wasn't a bunch of hard work in order to get to the place that we were, we are, or that we are unique and special in the ways that we do the things that we do. So, you know, we fast forward through that nourishing piece, and then it's really about um, evaluating 
the options that are available to you. I've got these skill sets. That's your foundation. These are the resources, the arrows in your quiver. But what target can I actually reach or hit with the stuff that I have? 